Welcome to the Harshi Podcast. I'm Brandon. In January. You probably already knew that by now, though. Hopefully. Probably. I don't know. Some people jump in and listen to one here and there, probably, depending on the topic. Yeah. You know, not everyone goes in order like you. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are more like me, a little jumpy, a little fidgety, a little spontaneous. <laughs> They start with the newest episode. Who are these people? (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. So we're doing it for that person, that one person. (laughs) For whoever you are who have never heard our podcast before, that's who we are. Well, tell everyone what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about mental health and meditation. Yeah, I love it. I do too, because meditation has helped me a ton with my mental health. Mm -hmm. And by helping me a ton, I mean it's pretty much changed my life. That's a big statement. It is an incredibly big statement. Uh, As you know, if you listen to the bipolar disorder episode we recorded a while back, I've had bipolar disorder and probably most of my life and certain circumstances uh, in recent years have triggered some difficulties with that. Uh, Well, many difficulties, not some. And it was a real challenge and I actually went and saw a psychiatrist and was on medication and everything. And Can I just interrupt and say that's huge? because that's really not our philosophy or way of life. And so you had to hit a pretty low rock bottom. Well, that's what rock bottom is, right? The low is low Yeah. to go and do that. And I want to say that even though that's not our normal way or philosophy, that I think it's important that you can say that you did that regardless, because it's what you needed at the time to pull you out of that trench that you were stuck in. And it was one little piece of your journey. But it, it is important, I think, to acknowledge that. Yeah, I'm I'm the type of person who is against big pharma and very holistic in how I do things in my life. And so yeah, that it was a pretty significant step to, to get to that point. And very humbling too. Yeah, incredibly humbling. Uh, the whole the whole situation itself was humbling. Just to have to admit that I had that particular issue and then to actually go and seek help for it. It's a lot of setting the ego aside. Isn't it interesting that we have to say have a particular issue or, you know, disorder, something wrong with us when really all of our brains work a little bit differently. And we all also are raised in different environments. And there's so many variations of normal there. I mean, really, none of us are normal. Like who, who sets the standard for the normal? I don't know who would set that standard. We're all a variation of this normal. Yeah, well, I remember last year, you asking me the question, if we lived in another country, do I think I would need to be on medication? And I always said no. Because it's a very fast-paced society that we live in here in the States. 100 miles an hour at all times. And it can be very stressful, and it is very stressful. Uh, There's a lot of mental health issues in our country, a lot of health issues in general. Just when you look at all these school shootings, I mean, there there is stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on in our country that needs a lot of work. Yeah, and, you know, that's opening up a huge can of worms that, right. you know, is probably about 10 podcast episodes full. So I'm not going there, but where right. I am going is that to still all of this craziness that's all around us, that's in our minds, that consumes us, that can lead us to mental health issues. For me, finding meditation and practicing meditation on a regular basis has, like I said before, changed my life to a point where I can push all that stuff aside and really focus on the here and now. And it's really interesting because with meditation, I feel like I'm finally getting to know myself. After 39 years of life, I'm wow. finally getting to know who I am wow. and who it is that's lurking underneath there that I've never really met before. It's a very interesting I practice. Think, I think you, br- you bring up a good point is that we are very go, go, go from... Well, from the get go, you know, from the way our most of our births happen and then the way our lives are from a young age and up, we're always trying to fill in the gaps and fill in the space and do more and be more and have more, have more, have more. And there is not any form of stillness or mindfulness already present in our everyday life, in our culture. And so you do have to create it. You do have to make it. You do have to find it. And that's what meditation offers. That's what yoga offers. I'm not a a yoga person, but I know that, you know, things like that offer people, you know, this isn't about looking better or, you know, to be able to post a cool post on social media or whatnot. This is you finding uh, mindfulness 
and quiet for you, not for anyone else. And in our culture, in our society, that's not going to happen for us. You know, we don't have a, a, a society that has a lying in period for moms and their little ones and their partners postpartum. We don't have families that come in and, and take care of us for 40 days. You know, we don't have much maternity leave at all. We don't have paternity leave. We don't have siestas in the afternoon. We, I don't even think most places even close on major holidays anymore. Our society is not built in a way to A, practice any kind of stillness or mindfulness or B, support the family. The only way to have that for yourself and for your family is to create it yourself. And you really are stepping outside the box that we've all been put into and that's been created for us and around us. And that's okay. And we can do that. But it it takes daily awareness I think to have that and daily, you know, meditation practices. And we're in the beginning of our journey with the, with more mindfulness and, and meditation. And I bring up daily because I know for me, I, that's something that I'm, I'm reworking on is getting back into a daily practice of meditation and you started meditating and then it was helping you a lot and you stopped really doing it every day and it was a night and day difference for your mental health, correct? It, it was. And in the episode where we talked about my bipolar disorder, uh, that was one of the things we talked about that helped was the meditation. And then you're right. Yeah, I stopped for a while because I started feeling better and then I'd get this, this egotistical way of thinking Oh, okay. Well, I'm better now. I don't really need to meditate that much anymore. And uh, it, it would be better for a little bit, but then things would build and build and build. And then all of a sudden I'd snap and it wasn't good. What really happened for me, uh, probably about a month and a half ago, two months ago, something like that. Right. Well, around my birthday and after. So the end of January. Yeah. The end of January, we had some pretty bad stress that I did not handle very well, <laughs> to say the least. And it was around your birthday. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, around our birthdays, I guess, but mm-hmm. it started on your birthday because mm-hmm. uh, mine is 11 days later. Mm-hmm. By the way, she's the older woman, so she gets to try out the, the new ages every year for 11 days before. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's okay. I'm aging without fear, so no you problem. Are. I'll yeah. own that. You're aging very gracefully. I, you know, that just means that you really need to listen to my wisdom. <laughs> so proceed. Yeah, I was not doing well. And I can't remember exact. Actually, yeah, no. the The catalyst was we rewatched the Matrix movies with our yeah. older two. Isn't that Isn't that so funny? And I absolutely love those movies. And you think about the red pill and opening up your mind, freeing your mind, all <laughs> that stuff. There. And it just got me onto this path, and I started looking into Buddhism. It's completely captivated me. And one of the big practices of Buddhism is meditation. And being able to get yourself to that place where you're practicing mindfulness and it has been a game changer. It almost seems like for you, meditation went as something that was on a checklist or almost trendy a little bit, but on a checklist to, okay, wait, this is a way of life. And when you're doing something because it's trendy or it's a fad or it's just part of something on a checklist or you're doing it because... I don't know, for other reasons, not for yourself, kind of like if you're dieting a certain way or you're exercising for another reason, you know, or for you, you're meditating because it was part of a checklist that doesn't have any, there's no anchor there. It's not grounding at all. And so when you shifted your thinking into, wow, this is a way of life, an everyday way of life, it opened up a whole new door for you. And it was no longer me nagging you, have you meditated today? Have you meditated today? And it's more of, I need to go do another meditation or I want to go meditate, not not even need to, I want to. And you meditate a few times a day, actually. I do, I do. Uh, at least twice a day, probably half the time, three times a day. What it is, is, is the chiropractor part of me had a little talk with the, the unintelligent part of me. <laughs> And it was kind of reminding myself what I tell people or what I've told people when they ask, you know, how, how do I get healthier? Or how do I lose this weight or how do I do this? And it's not about diets or trends or fads. Like you said, it's, it, you have to change your way of life. Like I didn't truly get healthier physically until I completely changed up my diet and adopted a whole new way of looking at food, at the way I ate food, the way I exercised, I mean, the way I live my life in general. 
I had to adopt the same thing with my mind Mm -hmm. because my physical health has not not been a problem. Mm -hmm. Physically, I'm very healthy and had a blood test a few months back that proved all that, which Mm -hmm. I was very grateful for. But Mm -hmm. mentally, I was not there. And so jumping into something like Buddhism was a way for me to just completely change my life and change how I was looking at things. And yeah, now it's at the point where I look forward to meditating the way I look forward to going to the gym and lifting weights. Which is a big deal for you because yeah. you love that. I, oh, I love lifting mm-hmm. weights. I love working out. It's it's great. For those of you who don't love going to the gym working out, it'd be like if you were getting to like have a wonderful bath to yourself for a few hours or watch your favorite show or or having sex or I mean, have an orgasm right like you know t- t- for me meditation loves, is on that level you love going to the gym yeah, that's true you I love, love going, going to the gym i love sex <laughs> and i love meditation well, i gotta keep you focused okay i gotta keep you focused <laughs> sorry you distracted me <laughs> i need to go meditate to focus <laughs> oh my goodness uh well for me meditation helps with my racing like thoughts and go 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 mentality and I have to check this email and I have to do this for this event. I have to do this for this kid. And oh my gosh, our finances. And then, you know, what about this? And what about that? And I have this coming up and oh my gosh, how am I going to be able to handle that project? Or holy crap, how am I going to be able to pay for that or for that? And oh, these people are waiting on me for this. And, you know, and then I have the six kids and well, are we behind a homeschool or this kid needs this attention or this kid needs that attention. And yeah, you know, and it is <sighs> whew, very, and that was just like the, the top. That was like not even all of it. Right. And that's all day, every day. And then that's without even getting on social media and taking in other people's thoughts and their posts and their comments and their this and their that. Oh my gosh. And I don't watch the news. I can't even imagine adding that on top of it. So, God. I mean, and this is why we deal with anxiety, you know, which is again, a whole other um, subject. But so for me, uh, practicing meditation is, it's almost like just giving myself permission to just sit and be with my own thoughts and not taking anything else from anybody else. And it's amazing how quickly I go from, being stressed out to, oh, not only is everything going to be okay, but it's fantastic. When I meditate, what I have found now is that I like to give myself a few minutes of just either laying down or sitting there with my eyes open and just, you know, looking at a focal point somewhere and letting those thoughts kind of run through my mind for a few minutes uh, and just give myself permission to just think about what's on my mind. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll cry I've, I've actually started meditation by just laying there thinking and bawling my eyes out because I'm so frustrated or resentful or angry or stressed out. And I just let those emotions come out and then I meditate. And I always start with, I am love, I am light, I am peace. That's just a mantra that came to me when I started meditating a few months ago that really works for me. And then I'll concentrate on each one and and I'll, you know, work through each one and see which one I need to sit with the most. And then I'll see where my meditation goes for there. For me, meditation is a lot of, you know, just affirmations and reaffirming, you know, my power and my peace and my light and my love. And then it's amazing what a 180 will not only go and how I feel, but I mean, you, you make comment all the time of how you can just, my face just looks different right? Oh yeah. It, like, this is probably most of us, but me very much. So I don't know if that's cause I'm an empath or just who I am or my, just my weird face. I don't know. But when I'm stressed out, you see that. And when I'm, when I'm happy and when I'm, when I'm really sitting with that energy of light and love and peace, it just shoots out of my face mm-hmm. positively. That's how it helps me. It helps me to, to slow down for a moment and to not just be having these racy, stressy, stressed out thoughts that I go down a a bad rabbit hole with, you know? Um, And I didn't think that I could meditate. I actually really didn't. I thought that, you know, I had tried before. I had done guided meditation. I, you know, you read these things where it's like, oh, you have to sit there and clear your mind. And that's just bullshit because I cannot sit there and just not think of something. You know, I have to at least focus on one word, right? And I just thought, and I did guided meditation and that's, that's fine, I guess. I fall asleep. You know, I tried different things and I just did not think I could meditate. And it wasn't until a friend shared with me how she meditates and, I realized that I needed to do it my way because she shared with me how she did it her way and it was different than I ever heard before. I'm like, okay, well, she is doing that her way. I can do it my way. And, you know, being a word person, I mean, you know, my first two tattoos were quotes, you know, and being a right. word person and a quote person, affirmations that I come up with or maybe a, a word or, or something that's bothering me, I need to focus on that day. 
find that when I repeat the affirmations until one hits me in the gut, then, then I know that that's the one I need. And it just grounds me. Um, but I do know that um, I'm just a normal person like anyone else. And if I can find a way that it can work for me, and if you can find a way that it works for you, then any of you guys listening can find a way where you can sit for 10 minutes, even if you're waiting to pick up your kid, you know, in the car, park the car or five, 10 minutes. Another friend of mine, she does it in the bathroom. The only place she can find some space where she hopefully won't be interrupted. She takes in some pillows and she dims the light and she sits in the bathroom and she does her morning meditation for 10 minutes. I have another friend who finds a park close to where her kid's school is and she'll just sit there for 10 minutes before she goes to get in the pickup line. I mean, that's probably actually a really good time to meditate. (laughs) Are you dealing with other parents in the carpool pickup line and meditate? So finding that 10, 20 plus minutes, you know, a day where you can just slow down and be mindful and shut out not only the world, but also calming your own thoughts in your own mind. Well, and, and meditation is about focusing on one thing. Being able to clear your mind completely, that, that that's not possible until you get to enlightenment. And very few people can get to that point. That's what made the Buddha. The Buddha, was he found enlightenment. With meditation, like you said, it, it, our thoughts are always racing. You know, you, you see that, or not see, you hear about how women are always thinking about a million things at once. Right. And, and men are thinking about... How we have like 50 tabs open in our mind, right, like and, sticky notes and color coded. And, and men can only think about one thing at a time. <laughs> Me personally, I think if I grew up in this day and age, I would have been diagnosed with ADHD because I always have a minimum of about 10 things going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is being able to still your mind to one thought. Mm -hmm. And one thought compared to 10 or 20 is such a peaceful place to be in. No wonder you like sex so much. Because the only other time I ever hear you say that is, you know, we're being intimate. It's like you're not thinking about anything else. No. That's that's a good point. I never thought about that. (laughs) You're welcome. <laughs> That's going to be another reason I will bring up often. Oh, oh hey, it's hey, let's find some peace in our orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> but with meditation, you can, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no right or wrong way. I mean, there's what, 7 billion people on earth. There's probably 7 billion ways to meditate. Probably. From what I've been reading and looking into, the, the best way to start is just shoot for 10 minutes give yourself 10 minutes in the morning and set a timer if you have to yeah yeah you can sit down in a chair you can sit cross-legged on a pillow on the floor you can lay in your bed if you want the whole point of meditation is just being still and in the moment and focused on one thing so what you can do in the beginning is you can focus on your breath you know inhaling and exhaling just think about the air going in through your nostrils exhaling out your nostrils you could think on uh, a word like you said like you you focus on you know i am love or i am light something like that uh sometimes you can focus on an, a particular object and, and literally just focus on that there's so many different things you can do I, i've been enjoying there's a elemental type of meditation where you can focus on if i turn on the fan in the room while i'm, I'm meditating and focus on the wind that's blowing on the fan and how that relates to the breath i'm inhaling and exhaling that helps a lot. And the whole point is just focusing on one single thing, whether it's mm-hmm. your breath or a thought or a word or an object, mm-hmm. anything, and just focusing on that, that thought as much as you can. And you're going to get so many different thoughts running into your mind. In Buddhism, they call it the monkey mind. Your mind wants to monkey around. Mm-hmm. It has all these different thoughts that are going to invade and, and try and distract you. And what you do is you don't get frustrated that you have all these right. other thoughts. You just say, oh. You acknowledge it. Another thought. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's focus back on the breath or let's focus right. back you, you on You can acknowledge it word. and set it aside and yeah. then refocus back. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Giving it its due that it's there. Because when on. you try to force yourself not to think about anything, all you're going to do is think about those things. But if you make space for them to come up, acknowledge it, move it aside and go back to what you're focusing on, it's like, oh, okay. I can do that. Yeah, it's and it's kind of funny how uh, I read recently about the one meditation do is just let your mind run wild Mm -hmm. and see where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried that a couple of times. I actually just did that this morning, Mm -hmm. uh, what, hour, hour and a half ago. And my mind was going crazy. In the mornings, for some reason, my mind is just going 100 miles an hour. It just takes off, right? Yeah, it just takes off. So I was sitting there trying to focus on something, anything, and (laughs) I couldn't. My mind was just all over you know monkeying around like you couldn't believe 
so just let's run it, run its course and then it, it's almost like in cars when you know lightning mcqueen is showing off and yeah the doc is telling him you have to turn right to go left yes and, and he's laughing at him and he ends up in the dirt but that's how it is with your mind it's going crazy it's just like just let it run wild and then all of a sudden it's like everything just kind of settled down and then there was this one concept that was left over in my mind i just focused on and then i had a great meditation and 15 20 minutes whatever and then i was felt, i felt great you bring up a good point that when you wake up in the mor- morning your thoughts are just going 100 miles an hour right away and mine do too and that can give me such a pit in the gut sinking feeling if it's stuff that's stressful and isn't it wild that most of us now the first thing we do is either turn on the news get on our phones get on social media you know, start taking in the world's problems and everyone else's problems. And we haven't even calmed our own mind. We haven't even worked through our own thoughts in our own life before. It's almost like we're either taking other people's problems or creating more problems to not just deal with what we already have in front of us. So if you can like literally pause and sit up in bed or, you know, get up and go to the bathroom and then sit down in, you know, a comfortable place and just sort through your own thoughts in a quiet space without looking at anything else like like phones or social media or emails you're going to start your day off on such a better foot (laughs) like that one decision in the morning to practice five to 20 minutes of self-care by slowing down your mind and being mindful and sorting through your thoughts and focusing on an affirmation or a word or whatever it is however you best do it can completely change not only your mental health for the day, but just your day. Every interaction you have with your spouse, partner, family, relatives, kids, strangers will be completely different. And let me tell you, when you heal yourself, when you change yourself, it starts changing and healing everyone around you. You are either shooting negativity out of your pores or positivity out of your pores. And that decision is on you and based around your self-care. And meditation is one of the best ways to change that for, for the better. One thing I just remembered is sometimes we are super busy and being parents, you're, you're woken up by the kids. Absolutely. And you can't sit there and take some time to yourself, right. you know, especially if you have little ones, toddlers, right. and they don't care. No, uh, they're, they they're, don't. they're terrible people. They're heartless. <laughs> Stop it. They don't care about anyone but themselves. And we have to teach them how to care. Exactly. So it's like they're born with pure love, but selfishness at the same time. And so if you're, if you have to wake up because of one of these, these little terrible people (laughs) (laughs) and you don't have that time, one practice you can do is something I actually love is, and I do it in the car sometimes, is you just focus on what you're doing in that moment. Every action you're taking, everything you're doing, you just affirm it in your mind. So for example, I'm, I get in the car to drive somewhere and what I'll do is I'll say to myself, okay, I'm putting my keys in the ignition. I'm turning over the engine, taking my foot off the brake. I'm, I'm backing up. I'm turning my hands hand over hand, putting my, my hands at 10 and 2. I'm accelerating on the gas pedal slightly. I'm going over the speed bump. I'm going up this incline. Just everything you're doing, you say it in the moment. So you can't help but focus on what you're doing in that moment because you're saying it to yourself. You can't say it to yourself and then think about the game last night or the kid's poopy diaper everywhere. Or this person who wronged you or sent you a nasty yeah. email or this post on social media or whatever it is. It's like practicing mindfulness action. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's like being mindful in the actions that you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Mindful of your actions in, in the moment. And you just can't help but focus only on that. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really beneficial had to stop because it relaxes me to the point where I start to feel a little sleepy. And when you're doing that in the car, that's not the best thing. (laughs) So I have to stop and then settle myself down and maybe turn on some music or something. But so you uh, go from like practicing mindful mindfulness action to like listening to Pantera. (laughs) No, 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 I don't. I I save that for the gym. That's, that's angry music. That's your gym. Hey, if that's not balance, if I've ever heard it, right? Hey, <laughs> Practicing yeah. Practicing meditation and then you have your medal for the gym. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your yin and yang right there in one podcast. <laughs> well, actually, I, I took you to the airport 
this last time, the last event you did, and, and I did that on the way to the gym after dropping you off, and I got really sleepy. And yeah. So <laughs> I got to the gym and actually pulled in the parking lot, and I took a little snooze for about 15 minutes See? before I went in to work out. Yeah, you can do that. And People between don't the do meditation that. of driving and then the, the little nap, man, mm-hmm. I was good to go for working out. So try that and see if that helps. Uh, it, it helps me a lot. You uh, have been reading a few books out of the few that you've recently read. Are there. Is there one in particular that you would recommend? Well, the book that really got me starting into this is is a book on meditation itself. And it's called Turning the Mind into an Ally by Sakyong Mifam. Mifam? I don't know. I'll, I'll put a picture of it on my Instagram so you can see. But it's a really good book. And it's specifically about meditation. Mm-hmm. It really got me thinking about all this and mm-hmm. really practicing it in the way that is beneficial to me more of a way of life instead of a checklist what was the second book that you read do you have it the second book is downstairs it's called awakening the buddha within yeah you really liked that one right i did and it's uh the author is uh lama surya das and Mm -hmm. it's this guy he's a jewish guy from long (laughs) island love it he was born jeffrey miller and he ended up going on this journey of of buddhism and Mm -hmm. he lived in nepal and india and did all these meditation retreats and mm-hmm. became a, a lama and and uh, he he's got some good stuff too. I've enjoyed watching his videos, reading that book and that's cool. I think something that I want to say real quick is that when you are looking into something for yourself, whether it's meditation or something else, it's very easy for us to like look at people who have written books or look at people on social media and then compare and think oh, well, I can't do it like them or they're doing it at this level or, you know, whatever it is comparing. And, and Brian and I find this a lot that we, we don't really know anyone else like us. You know, we do things so differently and we don't really fit into any one category. And so if you find somebody that, you know, you, is, is speaking something that you need to hear or you find a book that you want to read, this author you're speaking of, he doesn't have kids. No. Right. So it's like, oh, that's great. He can go to Nepal and go on all this stuff or whatever, whatever. But I can't do that because, you know, we got kids. Okay, that's fine. But you know what? He doesn't have kids, so he can do that. And now he's written a book and we can take the Mm -hmm. knowledge he's learned without needing to go and do those things and, you know, doing a vow of silence for seven months or something ridiculous like that. You know, so, you know, to us, that's kind of ridiculous because, you know, we have children, we're in a relationship. So, you know, there might be a lot of people, you know, these books that you're reading or where whoever you're you're looking in into their knowledge and wanting their wisdom, you might not be able to relate to them on an everyday to day life basis, but we can still take their, you know, take knowledge that we need to hear and leave the rest. It's not about comparing. It's not about trying to be like somebody else. It's about getting the knowledge and then making it work for you. You still have to do you boo. You still have to do you like, you know, find the information, be inspired by other people. But then at the end of the day, they're humans, they're imperfect too. And they're there to give you that inspiration and the information, but then you have to do you with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be real hard if you if you sit down and really think about it. It's going to be hard to find anyone like yourself to to emulate. And I think yeah. sometimes we do get in that trap of like, oh, you know, we want to be like this person, but you know, this person doesn't have kids, or they're not living your life, or they. they and have, then you start comparing, and then yeah, you get you frustrated, comparing. and then it, if you're going to compare anything, you just compare yourself versus yourself yeah. yesterday, you or a year you. ago, or mm-hmm. ten years ago. Right. Say, am I any better than I was yesterday? Am I any better than I was five years ago? Right. And it's just constantly wanting to improve yourself. That mm-hmm. that's me. I'm mm-hmm. I'm always in competition with myself. Like right. I always want to be better than I was yesterday in some way or another. And I think that's the only way really to be. And that really takes the ego out of it. When the ego's in there, it's constant just comparing mm-hmm. to everyone. And mm-hmm. that's a real source of And then oh frustration. gosh, that just doesn't look pretty because then you either are tearing yourself down or you try to tear the other person down because yeah. you feel insecure or you know frustrated you know with what they have what you think they have and you don't have and yeah you know so that doesn't that doesn't serve anyone so even with 
what we've talked about today on this podcast, whatever you're going through in your life or your mental health, like that's your journey. So take anything from today that works for you and leave the rest and whatever works for you to take that and and expand on that and find other resources, you know, away from us that help with that one little thing you heard today, you know, whatever works for you, because this is about your mental and physical health. This is about your journey and your happiness. So hopefully something that we've talked about today with Brandon's mental health and my, you know, anxiety and just our lives as parents of six kids and how meditate we're in the beginning stages of this, of meditation for us. Like this, we're, we're infants in this journey and we're just cute little infants just sharing our toy with you because we haven't learned how to have an ego and not share, I guess yet. So, um, and we're not going to, you know, on this path, on this journey, like that's the whole point is that we want to share this. When you find something that helps you, you want to share it with others and you want to say, Hey, Hey, like, and not in a way of you need to do what I'm doing, but you just extend that hand of grace out when you learn to give it to yourself, when you're giving yourself grace and you're giving yourself love, when you extend your hand out and your knowledge out, it's only coming from a place of grace and support and love. So I hope that anything that we've shared today can help you guys on your journey, or at least maybe just help you not tear your hair out with your children at bedtime tonight. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's all it is. You just yeah. need help to not go a little a little nuts in the carpool line today when you pick up your kids in school. <laughs> you know, something like that. So Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's so true. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Well, I just I feel like it has changed my life quite literally and it's rewiring my brain and all the the way the way I think about things and the way I look at things just I'm almost feeling like I'm a completely different person than I used to be and mm-hmm. like you said I'm still in the infancy of this journey but it is really exciting because I feel like I've already made so many astounding leaps and bounds just in this little short time I can't wait for what's going to happen a year from now, 10 years from now. I mean, holy moly, this is, yeah, this is a really exciting journey that I'm on. And it's like, I finally feel like I'm getting better. Like I can look at things rationally and right. And being bipolar, it's like not this manic thing or, or it's, uh, well, bipolar too, it's not manic. It's, you're more on a depressed hypo, level. Hypomanic. Yeah, you experience hypomania, which hypomania. is a level below mania. Right. So it's not that. It's not like, oh, yeah, I found something. You know, it's it's very grounding. It's yeah. like, no, I really found something that's truly helping me and helping my brain. Yeah. Helping my brain rewire itself and think different and react differently. I think that's one of the biggest things is you react differently to things uh, mm-hmm. with you when you meditate regularly. Uh, it's truly a night and day difference so i think that's cool i mean we'll we'll continue talking about this we wanted to specifically talk about the beginning of the journey how anybody can do it there's many different ways to do it Mm -hmm. and how meditation you know can help with mental health so absolutely if you have anything going on with your mental health try meditating Mm -hmm. i'm not telling you it's going to be a cure or anything of that nature, but it, can only it help. will help for right. sure. It, it will can definitely only help. calm you and help Absolutely. you without a doubt. So just at least give it a shot. I am going to wrap this up because okay. you get to finish your sleeve today and your tattoo. So yes. And uh, I'm excited to see the man array. So that's, that's cool. going to be exciting. That's cool. All right, you guys. Well, we hope that this brought you a little bit of light to your day. And until next time. Adios. Love you.